Welcome to this Java tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to use arrays but before I do that I'd just like to apologize for not releasing a video in about three months or so. I don't know why I haven't, I just haven't got around to it really. But now I have and I plan to keep it up for a while. So I hope you're glad that the next tutorial in the series has come out even though it's about four months late but it doesn't matter it's here now so let's get started arrays arrays are just another way to store data and a very very useful way to store data let's just create a new class and call it array examples okay and We'll just do everything in the main method. Okay, so let's start off with an example. What if you had a class of 30 students and you wanted to store their test results in a percentage, say out of 100%, in a program so you could access it whenever you wanted. What would you do? From my other tutorials you would think that you would have to create a variable to hold each student's data. For example, in student 1 equals 83%, 85 that is, in student 2 equals 65%, of course, that is going to be very, very laborious doing that 30 times. And what if you had wanted the test results of the whole school or college? You'd have to do that a thousand times or more. So that's where arrays come in handy. What we can do is create a single array and that can hold all our data in one easy to manage place. So, this is how you declare an array. You specify the data type. All, da all um, data inside the array has to be this data type. You can't have a mixed data type. A mixed The elements inside the array can't be of mixed data types. And then you use two square brackets. This is what um, is different about declaring an array rather than a variable because your these square brackets tell that tell the um, compiler that this is actually an array. So then you just set a name to the array. We'll call that test results. Okay, and that's how you declare an array. So that's just created an array which holds integer values and we call it test results. Now to um initialize this array so to actually create it what we're going to do is test results equals new int then inside some square brackets 30 okay that creates 30 null elements in our test results array okay notice the use of the new keyword and then the data type that we're using. That is how you initialize an array. Um, if we wanted an array of strings, then it would obviously be new string or whatever other object or primitive data type you wanted an array of. But for now, we'll just stick with integers. Okay, so that's great. We've got our array and it has 30 places to hold our data but at the moment it hasn't got any data in it so how would we enter data into every single one of those well we can do this by doing this test results and then the number which we want to store the data in which in this case the first value is zero because in arrays the number system starts from zero so the first value in an array is 0, second is 1, okay? And that goes on and on. 
so and then we just as use the assignment operator which is an equal sign and whatever value we want so let's say 87% this guy is quite clever or girl okay and we can do that up to 29 because that will be the 30th element because it starts from 0 okay so that is the basics of arrays but there are different ways in which um, you can declare and initialize these arrays I'm going to show you a different technique now let's have a string array and call it days of the week so string days of the week okay notice that I've put these square brackets at the end of the name rather than by the data type they can go anywhere so they could be here like that or there or at the end of the name it doesn't matter it's just up to you it depends on your programming style as a personal preference of mine I usually have it to the right of the data type so I'm going to change that from there back to there it's just a personal preference it doesn't really matter okay and what we can do is we can use e a um, squiggly brace and then all the days of the week this will automatically I'll just bring that onto the new line so you can see this will automatically um, set the array to the correct length depending on how much data we input I'll just do up to Friday otherwise you get bored okay so now all our data is in this array so we can um, use this array and this array just like any other variable so we can output them like a variable so test result and then test results zero that would just output um, 87 onto the screen of course we can't use say number 12 because we haven't actually assigned a value to number 12 yet we can do that if we wanted to but I won't because it's exactly the same as assigning any other one okay so the same with days of the week if I just copy and paste that and then I can say I wanted uh, Wednesday that's the third day of the week so I would put in the number two because remember it's the counting starts from zero so zero one two that's three which is Wednesday okay so we could just compile that now and uh, I'll just say that um, what's it called? Array examples dot Java. Okay, I just bring up command prompt. Hopefully, we won't get any errors. You may have seen a obvious error that I've made throughout while I've been typing it. Oh, have I not saved that properly, or have I typed it wrong? Let's see. Where's the file? Well, this is what happens when you make this up as you go along. I've lost. Have I saved it in the right place? Ah, I've saved it in my documents. That's why. There we go. It's back in desktop now. Okay. Right. We have one error, which is it expects a curly brace, and that is most probably because. I ha yep, I have forgotten a comma. So remember, when you're listing these, have a comma between each value. Otherwise, you'll get a er nice error like I did. So let's compile that again. And I forgot to save it. God, it's been a while since I've done this, making lots of mistakes. Okay, there we go. So that is the exact output that we expected. 
so that is good okay so let's say we wanted to list all the days of the week okay so let's just m make a for loop which you were uh, talked about earlier and we're going to use a special variable and that is the length variable so days of the week dot length okay length is a variable that all arrays have and it is how many elements there are in that array so the days of the week will have a length value of 5 because there's 5 elements in the array okay so that's better than going if x is less than 5 because what if I add sat Saturday and Sunday then I'm gonna have to change it to 7 if I forget to it's gonna lead to all sorts of errors and bugs in my final program so days of the week dot length and then x plus plus right inside our for loop what we're going to do is print out each day of the week day number and then then x plus one because remember because uh, the arrays start from zero that means the first element I've got to cycle through is the zeroth element so that means x will be 0 when it comes to the first one but I want it to say day number 1 is Monday so I'm just adding 1 to the value of x that it has so it's just nice okay and then just, just that and then days of the week x okay so hopefully you understand what's going on there if not I'll just explain it very quickly if you can see it, so system to out to print line, you know what that does, that just prints to the console. And then day number, and then the value of x is printed out, but plus one. So instead of saying day number zero is Monday, it's going to say day number one is Monday, just to make it look pretty, because I like things to look pretty. And then we got a semicolon, not semicolon, a colon, just again to make it easier to read and then we're adding the the day of the week at reference x so that means every time it goes through this for loop x is going to increment by one so the first time it goes through it will say day number x zero plus one which is one day number one is i don't know why it keeps going back to the start but never mind so day number one is then days of the week zero which is Monday so day number one is Monday then it gets to the end x plus plus x plus one that means so x is now equal to one so day number one plus one two day number two is days of the week one because x will be replaced by the value that x is which is one so that's Tuesday okay so let's save that and compile it again and of course I get an error because I forgot to close off the final bracket and there we go there we go it cycles through all the elements in the array as you can see plus the the uh, stuff we outputted to the screen earlier so that is arrays they are very very useful if you don't understand anything just leave a comment I'll try and reply to it I know I haven't been replying to your comments lately but I will try I promise and if you have any other problems I'm sure there's lots of forums out there which will be willing to help I probably haven't explained this very well at all but I hope I've helped someone so to find out the full functionality of arrays you will see that 
in the next tutorial, which I think I will do a little, as I mentioned in the last tutorial, I think I'm going to do a little exercise for you, bringing all these skills together, and that will conclude these basic Java tutorial series. Okay, hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.